to be honest, I don't think there's much to explain about the ending of O Master, but I wanted to talk about some things that the show did pretty well to garner a 9 out of 10 rating. If you just want the ending explained, skip to this part. Otherwise, I will be talking about why the show is so damn slow. Of course, this video will contain major spoilers for the drama, so proceed at your own risk. Of all K-dramas I've seen, this show is the slowest, but its pacing does get addressed by Juin's mother towards the end. Pretend this show is a flower seed. From episode 1 to episode 13, it sprouts and stretches, but doesn't quite look that great until episode 15 where things get kicked into gear. The flower has completely bloomed, it looks pretty amazing, and then wilts away and dies by episode 16. Throughout the entire show, our two leads hold back their feelings. Bisu isn't familiar with relationships and Juin is worried about how it'll affect her career. Life and other feelings get in the way and delay their affections, but then suddenly in episode 15, when our two leads don't hold back or hide their feelings anymore, they don't just kiss, but take it further. I mean, wow. Most K-dramas are pretty tame, but this is another level. Whoa, great for them. This is what we were all waiting for. The theme of flowers and how love is a journey meant to be taken one step at a time is heavily reinforced by this show. In the end, is it worth the wait? That is a question you have to answer yourself. In the last episode, Bisu and Julian are embracing their final moments together. Bisu writes an ending where nothing actually happened when the 49 days were over. The mysterious stranger meant Bisu will pass on in 49 years and the couple will grow old, share memories, and live the rest of their lives together. It doesn't happen, but it's Bisu's unique way of comforting Juin because he is a writer. Instead, Bisu disappears just as the stranger explained. He wanted to give Bisu the opportunity to experience life and love with no regrets. Of course, Bisu completely botches the opportunity because he'd rather not have Juin grieve his death for the rest of her life and wants her to be happy. But the thing he didn't understand was that remembering people who have made an impact on your life does not only bring sadness, but happiness as well. A very bittersweet feeling, one that he couldn't see until his mother passed away. As a son, he has no choice but to remember his mother, but Juin doesn't have to bear that experience because she can just leave. Yet, she chooses to stay with Bisu. And so, just like how Bisu's mother always wore black to remind herself of her lover, Juin will go into the listening room and talk to Bisu to remind herself of her love for him. All of this to help with their mourning, grief, and loss so they no longer hide their feelings, but accept them. Sometimes, life throws the most unexpected things at us. I've always bashed on the sudden cancer diagnosis of characters or the car accidents that happen as a plot element for Korean dramas, but the better stories don't deal with the why. Why does she get cancer? Why did the accident happen? The better approach is, what are you going to do about it? And how are you going to handle this situation now? No matter what, you'll need some way, some method, or someone to help you deal with these situations, or to cope with them. And in this show, when our two leads had questions or weren't sure of how to handle something, they could always rely on each other and their loved ones for insight. So yeah, O Master is a 9 out of 10. If you're itching for more stories about love, life, and regrets, I recommend checking out the K-drama Radiant, the Pixar film Inside Out, the sci-fi film Arrival, and the Netflix show The Haunting of Bly Manor. The last one isn't too scary, I promise. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.